A lot of you may not know me, but I'm a late bloomer who at the age of 34 has found quote unquote love. A lot of people are like, oh my god, it's so inspirational. How can I get that? Wait for it to be my turn. And I'm like, babe, it has not been an easy road. That saying that you have to kiss a lot of frogs to get to your prince. I've been love's toughest soldier. So I've decided that I am going to share my story, my chaotic road to love because i need you to know that it has not been easy but maybe in somewhere in my chaotic story you can learn to shorten the gap to get to the end goal which is happiness and love and all the mushy things that we strive for this isn't to bash anybody in the past but really to like just tell my story on how i got to the point that i've gotten to and i wish nothing but love and light to everyone who played a part in my love story let's get to it because i'm talking to we are going to go back in time and we are going to start my love story at the year in 2008. I was at the ripe age of 18 when I had my first boyfriend. That is my first boyfriend. He is going to be named Jock. I met Jock at the age of 18 through a mutual friend, Brittany. Hey, Brittany, love you. My friend Brittany had went to a school, a Catholic school, and there were only two black people in her graduating class. So I'm in the stands cheering on my friend, and apparently Jock had saw me and went up to my friend and was like, I know she was here for you. I want to meet this girl. Who is she? She's beautiful. Blah, 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 blah. Me and Jock started a summer romance that was supposed to be just the summer, but carried on into my junior year in college. You might be wondering, why? Is Jock blonde hair and blue eyes. I am from a small town in Owensboro, Kentucky. Whenever my cousins were dating, they would find out that they were meeting, they were dating for like fifth, sixth, seventh cousin. I was like, whenever my mom allows me to date, I'm not going to date anybody black. I'm so sorry. I don't want to find out that I'm be dating my cousin until I get out of the city and state. Okay? He was a very popular boy, like in high school, going to college to play football. That was literally his entire personality what his family had made him to be they really thought that he was going to go to the nfl but it did not work out that way jock ended up losing his football scholarship because he got injured and he went back to our hometown i had ever stayed in college and we went to do different colleges i think jock had fomo and he would do this pattern where he knew that i was going to go out start an argument because he knew i was the type of girl that would not want to ruin the mood so i would stay home i caught on to this because my friends made me privy of what he was doing and that sparked Jock driving two hours. He pop up at my apartment to see what I was doing because I was not answering the phone. I was just trying to be a college kid. I was just trying to live my life. And that's what sparked the toxicity. I was like, oh, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. You are not going to blame me because you don't get to live the life that you thought that you was going to live. Absolutely not. I went through a lot of tumultuous things with Jock. But at the age of 21, I was like, enough. I cannot do this anymore. I ended the relationship with Jock. I wish him nothing but the best. We're gonna fast forward and we're gonna get to... I had joined the military in 2014. And in 2015, I went to tech school. If you are in the military, you know what that means, where you go to learn your job. And I was there with the Navy and I was there with the Army. You are military, you know that everyone has a tech school boo. And I was no different. I had a tech school boo. And this is where I met Puppy Love. Puppy Love was in the army. So we had match on Tinder. That's what the kids were using. That's what the kids were on. We had entered into a romance in tech school. Air Force, he was in the army. It was kind of like a little Romeo and Juliet type of thing. Whenever we have off time, we would spend together a lot of things. You know, very young things. It was a very intense time. Me and Puppy Love were in love. And then it was time for us to get our assignments. Puppy Love was stationed in the south where he is from and I was lucky enough to get orders to Germany. Puppy Love wanted me to stay in the States. He wanted us to get married, but I could not do that because I had dreams of traveling. And here I was faced with the decision, do I stay for love or do I do what I've always wanted to do? I was literally joining the military to pay off student loans and to travel. And here I am, granted with the opportunity to travel. I couldn't stay with Puppy Love. We tried to do the long distance thing, but me and him both knew what it was. We were not that type of people. So me and Puppy Love ended. Still talk to this day, I care for Puppy Love. And you know, maybe in another timeline, me and Puppy Love would have been together. In this timeline, me and Puppy Love could not last. I wish him nothing but the best. 
I would be remiss to leave out this part of my story. I was in Germany. Have you ever heard or seen anything in Germany? It's a lot of partying. It's a lot of ass shaking. Here I am getting paid to live my life in Germany. Me and my friends partied so much. So you knew where I was at? I was in the streets. I was in the streets living my young 25 year old life. In 2017, I was on Tinder, bored out of my mind in my dorm, and I wanted to go out, so I swiped and swiped and swiped and swiped, and I ended up matching with who we will call the DJ. This person literally was like, oh my god, what are you doing? We should go out. And I was like, mm, yeah, I'm feeling spontaneous. And I literally met up with a stranger in Trier to go to a random club in Trier where we went and smoked tuka and then we went and had drinks and dot, dot, dot. But you know what? I'm not ashamed of anything that I've done. I was living my life very young. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what I was doing, okay? And DJ hit me up and was like, we should go get breakfast. And literally after that, every weekend, me and the DJ were together. Now I call him a DJ because he started off as a DJ, but he was also part owner in a club and restaurant. So literally whenever I met him, his club restaurant was about to open and I remember he invited me and was like, hey, get really, really cute. I want you to be my date to the grand opening of our club restaurant. You'll get free food, free drinks, blah, 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 blah. And it was so amazing. Like I literally was like a cool little it girl because in Luxembourg where he lived and he worked, sometimes they were not let into the clubs so me dating a guy who literally was on the club scene i could get my friends into the clubs in luxembourg it was a cool time however i ended up getting orders to leave germany and i was heading to georgia and from the same thing with puppy love i am not a long distance person so we just caught it quits i wish dj nothing but love and light in his journey he was the first person to give me an orgasm i love that for me and i love that for him mom i hope you're not watching please I feel like for this next story, I have to give you a little bit of context. I was stationed in Germany, but every summer I would come home and visit family. And one summer I had came home, I was swiping and swiping and swiping, doing what the young people do, and I had matched with this person. And he was cute, I was cute, and we would talk, but I knew long distance was not for me. Therefore, it was not going to work. So we exchanged snaps, and we would snap each other here and there. And he was like, oh, if you ever were back in the States, I would want to see you. And so in 2018 when this person saw that I was back in the States, he was like, this is my opportunity and in waltz Prince Naveen. Me and Prince Naveen sparked this relationship and it started like, you know, very long distance. He was in Kentucky. I was in Georgia. We were like nine hours away. He asked if he could come see me. I said yes. And he literally drove the nine hours to Georgia to come spend a weekend with me. It was very awkward. Of course, it was going to be awkward. We didn't know each other like that. It wasn't like we had went on dates like that. We literally did a lot of talking, a lot of FaceTiming, a lot of Snapchatting. And then here this person was in my home we were trying to make it do what it do it's a very chaotic time we ended up ordering papa john's and i had explosive diarrhea and that was before me and him tried to be intimate and then a certain position had happened something went so where it was not supposed to go which caused a certain part of my body to swell up I remember I had started therapy and at this point I wanted this person out of my home. I was like, this is not it. Me and my first time with my therapist, shout out to you Mary Pie. And she was like, oh, do you have a relationship? And I was like, literally there's a man at my house right now. Um, and I don't know. She's like, what do you mean? I ended up telling her everything that happened. And But I told her how very apologetic he was. He was very nurturing, very caring. Is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything I can get for you? And she was like, I feel like you should give him a chance. And I was like, you know what, I should. But a small part of me was like, I shouldn't. And maybe I should have listened to that small part of my life. However, I'm a true believer that things happen the way they are supposed to happen. Can an event, it had to happen. And had it not happened, maybe I would not have gotten here to this point. Eventually, me and Prince Naveen end up getting engaged. He had met my family. I had went to go meet his family. Everyone was on the same page that we were going to get married and then i had deployed and the best blessing ever to have happened to me because had i not gone on that deployment i would have never saw the things that i needed to see and i would have ended up blindsided in a crappy marriage that deployment happened in a switch went off in prince naveen's head and all the crazy happened i'm not going to tell the full story but this person literally tried to blame me for a dui that they occurred while i was on the deployment and 
I had to make a strong decision. Even though people were kind of pushing me to get married, I had to make a strong decision for myself and say, I am not walking down anybody's aisle, regardless of how much money has been paid if I'm not happy. And it seemed like everyone only was like asking about him. Him, 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 him. How is he? How is the wedding? How is this? And no one was asking how I was, because I was not good. It was not a fun time on this deployment. Like, there were some fun times. I met a lot of cool people. But it was not a fun time mentally up here on that deployment. I was going through it. And I really tried to wait to get home to see if I can fix it. And I could not fix it. And it had got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I have to do what's best for me. And I had, remember talking to my therapist. I had an emergency call with her. And she was like, if you can't wait to have a face-to-face then do what you need to do. And that really gave me the confirmation to do what I need to do, which was break up with Prince Naveen. And I took a lot of L's. I lost a lot of money on deposits, but then it sparked something beautiful. And that's when I knew that I could stand up for myself. I was a strong person, even though people were, gonna, were telling me that I was making a mistake and that I was gonna be a terrible wife. I knew I was doing what I needed to do for me. And I'm so glad that I was strong and I had enough independence and love for myself to make it happen. Let me get off my soapbox. It was okay because Prince Naveen ended up getting married around the same time that me and him were supposed to get married. So like, it is what it is. He has a family. I wish him nothing but love and light. We're gonna jump to the end of 2019. After I had broken up with Prince Naveen, I had already mourned that relationship while I was in it, as women do. And I ended up meeting someone at the end of my deployment. It was never supposed to be anything serious. It was only supposed to be something to do when there's nothing to do. And in we are gonna have Taurus. I had ended up coming back home. He was getting out of the military. He was going back to Florida. I was stationed in Georgia. He was gonna come and see me. Something crazy happened that nobody in the world expected to happen, the pandemic. I was working six out of seven days because I was a single person and no, I did not have children. It was a trying time. I could not travel. I could not visit family. I literally went home, went to work, went home. The only exciting thing was me going to Walmart and following the little arrows to get groceries. That was my life. I was bored out of my mind and lonely and me and him was still kicking it. I literally call it a rebound that lasted too long. Me and him made a stupid decision to what? Move in together. Me and Taurus had moved into my apartment in August and I kicked that man out of my house in November. I could not do it anymore. We were never meant to be. It was never going to happen. And I said that he was quid pro quo. I knew that if he did things to me, it was not out of the goodness of his heart. It was going to come back up eventually. I knew we were not going to work whenever he ended up getting me a puppy to save our relationship. And then he ended up buying her a treat that dogs are not supposed to eat. And she ended up getting sick. He was more worried about a $20 bag of treats than my dog i knew that was the end i could not do it i did something that i didn't think was going to happen i had applied for a new assignment i got an assignment within a week kind of like i had asked god like, lord if i'm not supposed to be with this person please give me a sign and then i got orders to california and he was like yeah you gotta go I got to california in february of 2021 i had met who will we call love is blind i call him love is blind because i posted a photo of him and our close friend and people said that we look like cameron and lauren from the first season of love is blind i'm gonna be very careful how i talk about this person because this person was a very big part of my life me and him did a lot of growing together when i met this person they were very much in a very content stagnant place of mind like didn't like the job that they were working but wasn't really trying to apply more. And I'm the type of person I'm always trying to elevate. I'm always trying to get to the top. I'm always like, how can I be better? How can I get better? How can I get more? How can I do more? And I think being with me kind of sparked, oh my God, where's my pointer? Sparked love is blind to kind of get to that motivation. But what I did not like about the situation is we struggled 
physically. And then it felt more like we were friends than we were lovers in a sense. And then I ended up deploying again. And once again, it was the best thing because had I not deployed, me and Love is Blind kind of would have just been going through the motions to get to it. And it honestly would not have sparked him. And I think it kind of motivated him to kind of do more for himself. Like after that breakup, not saying it was because of me, he ended up getting that that raise going back to school doing the thing moving out into his own place and being more independent instead of like always doing the things that his friends wanted to do like being more independent and doing things for him and i'm not going to take the credit for that because i always knew that it was in him i think he kind of was like the catalyst and we kind of like spun the block which i do not do but that should tell you like how special of a person he was to me because regardless of him not having it all he always had the provider mindset he was a very big part of my like life and even even though we did not work and it's like very unfortunate how like you could really have like that that love for one another and that aspect to where you really care but it just does not mesh well and gel well and I knew that he was never going to break it off um so I had to do it for us because he deserves so much more and I too deserve so much more than us just being with each other to be in the motions so I wish love is blind nothing but the best i really hope he deserves so much and i'm literally about to like get emotional because like out of all of the situations that are on this board that probably was the one that was the most important to me and that's all i'm gonna say at the end of 2022 i ended up dealing with someone that we are going to call nonchalant it wasn't always terrible on paper, me and nonchalant look very good. We're both in the military, both 32, never married, no children. We looked good on paper. We triggered the fuck out of each other. But it didn't always start out that way. We had really good times. Like, it started off so promising. But then I knew deep down that I wanted a relationship. And this person said that they wanted a relationship. But I slowly began to realize that this person probably did not want the relationship with me. I'm not a nonchalant girl. I like my men to be chalanting. I don't have time to be guessing if you like me, if you care for me. And even though this person would say like, I'm spending time with you. I'm like doing things for you, which he was spending time with me. And he was buying me little things here and there because he knew that gift giving was my thing. It was the emotional thing. We did not have the emotional thing. And it was literally like pulling teeth. We realized it was not working. It was not going to work. I think I held on to it a tad bit too long because he was like a comfort. I was working a very intense job in the ICU. And I was on nights. And literally he was the kind of like continuity. The connection to a social life that I did barely did not have outside of him. But yes that had to end and if that did not end i would not have gotten to this point and this is where i say the lesson with nonchalant is know when it's time to let go and don't force yourself to stay in an emotionless connection because it's not a connection you deserve so much better and i wish that man nothing but the best because it was not me and he was not the best for me of 2023 you know downloaded the apps out of boredom and went on a few dates here and there but nothing ever sparked and i had said that i was going to delete that app because i wanted to refocus on my social media it was getting a little stagnant and i wanted to shake it up one dating app bumble and i went to delete it in november 21st of 2023 but something compelled me to swipe one more time and when i swiped enter mystery man I was not expecting this person to come at the time that he came like I said I had went to delete the app and I said to myself you literally just said you were gonna delete that app what are you gonna do and he had came at a time where I was kind of depressed it was right before Thanksgiving I was literally walking to my storage to go get my Christmas tree because I was like I'm not gonna wait to Thanksgiving I need some type of cheer I'm literally manic right now and everyone knows with Bumble you have to message that person first his profile looked very interesting he actually took the time to like really plan it all out and I said to myself I will message this person and if he messages me in the first five minutes and i'll entertain it but if he takes forever to message i'm just going to do what i said i was going to do and delete the entire app altogether. but that man immediately 
message came. People were like, okay, what was the first message? Like, how did it spark? I saw on his profile where he was talking about all oh, the House of Usher. I am a chicken. He said, how is that? I would really like to watch that, but I'm chicken. And then he took something from my profile where I said, if we get this right, meaning like if we get this relationship shit right on the app, we can be in matching pajamas by Christmas. And he said, well, if we get this right, we can be in those matching pajamas and we can watch the show together. And I was like, mm thing flowed beautifully i didn't have to like worry like oh my god is this person going to text me it was literally like boom 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 communication was like a one from the jump he was very intentional it wasn't like a, oh we'll see it was like hey i want to date you are you free this time let's go on a date not had to think does this person like me does this person want to be with me because he has told me from the jump his actions show it I don't have to fill in the gaps with him he doesn't leave anything to interpretation and honestly the way that this is going I think this might be it is this love I don't know and even the way like we argue it is not like I'm dreading the conversation because I know that someone's gonna gaslight me or manipulate me this person we fight fair and it's never like a a point to like get like prove the other person wrong or to one up the other person it's really to like us to get back to a common ground i'm just loving it here to be quite honest and fast forward we celebrated my birthday together where um he literally came to my house because i had to work this that week and brought me flowers he brought me perfume that i had talked about man literally schedules dates by sending google invites to me to put it on the calendar which is like chef kiss for the very type a personality that i am and on february 10th this man asked me to be his girlfriend and it's been a very a whirlwind of romance a lot of fun times and i'm so 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 happy i don't ever want y'all to think that it has been easy because it has not been easy but i had to go through a lot of shit and it took a lot of time and i feel like i'm still such a late bloomer here i am at 34 and i'm finally feeling like having this so i wanted to make this video for any woman out there that's feeling like oh my god when is my time gonna come babe it's coming just continue to work on you okay work on you being the best woman that you are and do not settle do not settle there's many times on this board where i could have settled but i chose not to because i knew i deserved better i knew that i deserved everything that my little bitty pity 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 heart wanted i knew i could get it and i knew there was a person out there who could give it to me and if you know a month from later it all comes crashing down i still would be proud of myself because i put myself out there i wasn't jaded i stopped listening to everybody's relationship advice and i did what was best for me and i was open to it and i never faltered and i wasn't scared to say the things that i wanted and required and how i wanted to be loved and this person is very open to giving me that so your time is coming come continue to work on you Thank you guys so much i hope this video brought someone some type of joy much love and light to you i love you all so much and i'll catch you all in the next video Bye.